Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Natural Bear, and welcome back to the PS2 collection. Um, obviously, the, uh, when whenever that was a few days ago, I uploaded the kind of the starting point of this whole journey, um, and we've made some purchases since then because you kind of need to do that if you're going to build a collection. Um, so yeah, we've got four overall purchases, um, but they're all of multiple games, so we've got quite a few to get through. So. Uh, we'll start with the most simple purchases that we did. Um, these games were £1.12 each with delivery. Um, so we've got Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30. Uh, this does not work. <laughs> um, I tried to play it and it just would not load at all. Um, I'm trying to think, is the disc... Oh, no, I remember this one. So if you look around the edge of the disc, if I can get a good shot of that. There you go, you can see it there. There's like residue or something around the disc. It looks a bit like glue or something, which is not, not fantastic. Um, so that game just doesn't work. So we're going to get a refund for that, which is annoying. Um, we are going to keep the case, however, because the case itself is actually fine. It's just, you know, the actual disc is screwed up. We could also keep the manual, I suppose. But I feel like this game, you can buy this game for 50p in CEX. Obviously, I kind of play, I paid a bit more than that because of delivery, ultimately. Um... But the point is, this game's not very rare, so I can pick this up no problem, basically on a random bundle or something. And then we've got Mercenaries here. Um, this actually came in a red case originally, but I swapped it out. Um, and I'll explain what I swapped it with later on. But uh, there's no manual with this one, unfortunately, but the disc is absolutely fine. Uh, these games have all been tested, by the way. If any of them don't work, I will explain later. But as you can see, the disc is all good on that one. Uh, so there's that. And then the broken game, which we'll be getting a refund for, obviously. Um, then we've got this lot here. So these were these cost me twenty four pounds overall. There's nothing too crazy in here until you get to the bottom, where there's two games that are kind of awkward to get. One of which, in particular, is kind of awkward to get. Um, but we'll explain when we get to the bottom. So. I did pay more than you would usually pay because I think there's like 11 games in here and not, and like I say, other than those two, they're all pretty standard titles, but it's those two titles that makes it worth the money ultimately. Uh, so we've got Smuggler's Run here. Um, yeah, it's it's complete. Um, I actually really enjoyed this game. Uh, I played I play all these games to test them, obviously, to make sure they actually you know work because if they don't work, you can't really say that you've got them, you know. Um, and this surprised me. It's really fun. It's actually a launch title for the PS2, and it's one of the better ones, I would say. Um, it's made by, at the time they were called Angel Studios. Nowadays, they actually are an internal division of Rockstar. I think it's Rockstar San Diego or something. And, yeah, they're, 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 if you look at what they've actually made, you know, they've made some cracking titles. And this is a really good game, to be honest. It's, it's really fun. Fun little arcade racing game where you have to... Uh, well, you're a smuggler, so you have to pick up packages, and there's other other smugglers trying to stop you. So you have to get to the delivery point without like being intercepted and stuff. It's really fun, good arcadey racing game if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, we've got oh this thing, Warhammer 40k Fire Warrior. Um, this game is it's it's pretty awful. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's it's funny in like a it's funny what it's awful in a funny way is what I tried to say. I got it the wrong way around. Um, yeah, it's if you've ever if you ever need to watch a funny uh, YouTube video, go and watch. Uh, there's a YouTuber called Lord Mandalore, and he does reviews of like old games and stuff. Go and watch his video on this game; it's great. Um, there's only two words you need to know: it's quiet. And if you watch that review, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. The manual on this one is a bit bodged, but it's not too bad. I've seen worse. And then the disc itself, if I remember, is basically. Uh... Let me see here. That's it. It's pretty bang on, to be honest. So, yeah, uh, all in all in good nick for the most part. So pretty happy with that. Not not happy playing the game, but you know, uh, Toka Race Driver. Uh, this is all complete and everything. Seemed like a decent little simmy sort of racing game for into that sort of thing. I personally am not, so I only played it really to test it, but it seemed fine. Total Immersion Racing, exactly the same sort of thing. Uh, nothing remarkable really. It's just your standard sort of racing thing. This is all complete and everything. So, and it's actually it's in really good condition to be honest. Stuntman Ignition, um, all complete and everything. It's actually in really good condition. Seemed quite fun. Uh, I've never really been into Stuntman personally. The first one was I remember being like impossibly difficult. 
this game seems to be a lot more... Uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to put it. It's not as difficult, let's just say that. It's not as unfair, actually, probably a better way of putting it. Uh, we've got Wipeout Fusion here. Um, all complete and everything. I had a lot of fun with this, actually, when I played it to test. I actually kind of wanted to play a bit more, but I had a lot of games to test, and it was quite late at night, so I had to move on. But um, it's actually really good. Wipeout's always been a good series, and this is a really good version of it. So, yeah, good stuff. Good soundtrack, too, as you'd expect from Wipeout. And then ignoring the games to the left, because, you know, they're the major ones, or not major, but they're the rarer ones. We have Terminator Redemption, or Terminator 3 Redemption. I can't believe how much fun I had with this game. <laughs> Genuinely. It's so it's 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 not actually a good video game, right? It's 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 kind of janky and I don't know, just a bit off. But my God, it's fun! Like the guy they've got playing the Terminator is a horrible Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonator. Impersonator, he's awful. He sounds nothing like Arnold whatsoever. But then also, you, there's a button to just do one-liners. So you just press L two, and he'll just say like a one-liner, an Arnold line, and it's like. Is this the best game ever? <laughs> it might be. And then, oh god, what was the thing I was laughing at? There's a um, there's a turret section, or there's a turret in one of the in, in the in the like the first level that you can just run up to. And while you're on the turret, some terminators will try and sneak up on you. And the game tells you like, oh, press X to you know attack attack behind you or whatever. I pressed X, and Arnold picked up the Terminator with one arm and threw him over his head in the most casual manner I've ever seen. I died laughing. I did not expect that. This game is its janky as fuck, but it looks really fun. I might actually go back to this because pr I'd probably have a lot of fun with this, honestly. It doesn't look very deep or anything. It's apparently very short. Also, apparently quite hard like because you have to restart the level from the beginning if you die. But it looks like a right laugh. So, um, yeah, so that's Terminator for you. And then we have the two ones that I bought this bundle for, really. Um, we have Armored Core 2 Another Age, and we have Silent Line Armored Core. This game you can get for about... I'm trying to think how much it was. On on, on eBay it was about maybe 5 to £10, pounds, so not a massive amount. But, you know, cost more than the average PS2 game, you would say, right? Um, but then this one, Silent Line Armored Core, it was about 15 if I remember rightly, on eBay. Um, and it's in really good condition as well. So apart from the manual on the or the sticker on the manual, that's annoying. But I can probably get that off. Um, yeah, I was really happy with that. I, I think it's a it's a good little uh, a good pickup. Like if you take into account all of this stuff, it probably was. If you, even if you go on CEX prices, right, where this is on the assumption that all of these games happen to be in stock in the one store that you're in, which is almost impossible, it would still set you back about twenty four pounds. So considering I got that with delivery, you know, and a box to store things in, obviously. Um, I think I did pretty well, honestly, so I'm quite happy with that. So, yeah, shout-outs to Facebook Marketplace on that one. Um, and we've got two more bundles to go, so we better get on with it. Okay, uh, these three, uh, these cost me £15. Um, sounds like a lot for PS2 games, kind of is. But again, CEX prices, you're looking at about that anyway. Again, all three would have to be in stock, and given that two of these games are relatively uncommon... That's not going to happen. So overall, I think I was happy with that. Uh, we've got Chaos Legion here. Um, this is the least rare of the three. Um, all complete and everything in okay condition. Um, this game's kind of interesting, honestly. It's like a, it's a hack and slash game, Capcom hack and slash game, where you basically the big the gimmick of this game is that you can command like a legion of demons to fight by your side, and these demons all have different uh, or the different armies all have different abilities and stuff. So. Not a bad little game, honestly. A little bit of a... This is a classic example of like a 7 out of 10 game, which the PS2 was fantastic at. It had a ton of like mid-tier kind of games that were, you know, they they, were, they did exactly one thing and did it fairly well. And this is a good example of that, I would say. And then next up, we've got uh, Zone of the Enders Second Runner here. Um, it's a special edition on the bottom, but I don't know if all of them say that. I have no idea. I, I, yeah, no idea. Um, probably need to look into that. But yeah, uh, there's no manual, unfortunately, um, which is really annoying. But um, it's all there and everything in terms of, well, I say it's all there. We've just established it's not all there. But the disc is there, <laughs> and uh, the disc is in decent condition. Um, yeah, this usually sets you back. I can't remember how much this sets you back exactly. I want to say between 8 and £10, pounds, something like that. 
so not too bad there. And then Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII, this is, uh, from what I can gather, it's quite hated by Final Fantasy fans, because it's a, uh, it's like a canonical thing, and kind of shits on some of the things that Seven did, and also it's a third person shooter, which a lot of people didn't like. Um, I have barely played Final Fantasy VII, so I have absolutely no uh, feelings towards this game one way or the other, really. Um, but yeah, it's all there and everything. The manual was there. Um, yeah, the manual ripped slightly because some idiot had put a sticker on it and I had to try and peel it off. And then, yeah, so it's ripped slightly. But other than that, it's absolutely fine. So, yeah, that's the three games that I picked up. £15. Pounds. Um, so, you know, I had to do that because the spine was on the other side. Um, yeah, so not too bad overall. And then there was this box here. Quite a big box. Uh, we'll start with the disc only ones here. Um, threw the box out of the way a little bit. Um, so these are disc only, but I have three of them. So they're just duplicates. So that's great because I can check if these discs are better than mine, which they're probably not because all three of these discs are kind of scratched up. They do all work, I believe. I think I tested these ones. I don't know. Um, so what I'm going to do is once I get enough duplicates together, I can just salvage any cases that I need and the rest of them can just go in an eBay lot or a Facebook Marketplace lot or something like that and I can just sell them for whatever money I can get. But yeah, there's Terminator 3 again. Um, that copy is definitely worse than the one that was that I showed you earlier, so that would just be kept as a duplicate. That's 13. I'll have to dig out my copy and see if, the, uh, if it's any better. I don't actually know. Uh, this red case is what uh, Mercenaries came in originally, and I swapped the cases because obviously I'm going to keep Mercenaries, and then th whereas this copy of, I think it's Cars, right? No, this is 007 Nightfire, so that's a duplicate as well. Um, so that's all fine. And then this dirty, horrible white case um, is Cars, Disney Pixar Cars. Um, obviously, this is just going to be a placeholder, really, until I get a boxed copy, and then this one can go on eBay. Or wherever I'm going to put them. Probably Facebook Marketplace just for a quick sale. Because I'm not, you know, whatever money I can get for them is whatever really, isn't it? Um, so, we'll start. Uh, this also, I, I also have this game. But there's obviously this copy's boxed. Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. My copy does not have the manual. Whereas this one does. And it's a pretty good condition manual. The disc is definitely worse though. So we're going to take the manual out of this one. Put it in my other copy. Which is also, it's a black label copy as well. It's not platinum. So it's also a bonus. But yeah, this is just going to go straight on eBay when we get enough stuff together. Uh, we have Smackdown Shut Your Mouth. Uh, case is not fantastic. Um, but if I remember rightly, the disc is pretty good and the manual's there and everything. So um, it's a decent copy. Um, and I played a, a round of this to test and it's still really fun. Uh, Hulk Hogan whipped my ass, however, so he's clearly OP in that game, but never mind. He's kind of... Oh, to be fair, he was OP in real life, wasn't he? Uh, we have Legends of Wrestling here. This did not work, but I don't think it's the fault of the disc. My PS2 struggles to read uh, CDs. So, in other words, this game, for example, as you can see, compact disc. Uh, this is a CD-based game, which you can tell by the, the blue back, which actually we'll come on to later because that kind of contradicts itself at some point. But, yeah, this didn't run, which I'm assuming, again, is to m more be because of the fact that it's a CD-based game. Because if you look on the back, there's barely any scratches or anything. It looks like it should play fine. So I will keep this and I will test it on a a different PS2 because I plan to get a new PS2 at some point if I can find one for a good price because um, mine's kind of it's not dying as such but it's it's not fantastic um so we'll keep this one anyway um and then obviously if we test it on another ps2 and it still doesn't work then we'll have to pick up another copy but by then we might have already have another copy i don't know but if put it this way if we get another copy of this and it also doesn't work then i'm just going to assume that it's the ps2 and not you know me that's got the issue uh, Devil May Cry 3 special edition there's actually two versions of this game there's the normal edition and this version um, so I'll have to pick up the normal edition as well at some point. Um, but yeah, it's all complete and everything's actually in pretty good condition, so happy with that. And it's still an absolute banger of a game, by the way. I love Devil May Cry 3, it's so good. But, I mean, nowadays you'd just play the HD version, really, wouldn't you? On the, on, I think it's on... What consoles is it on? It might be on, like, PS4 and Xbox One. I know it as being on PC, so... Uh, Ratchet & Clank, the original. This is can be quite hard to... Not hard to find, it's easy to find, but it can be... You know, you're looking at maybe seven or eight quid. So I think getting this was a pretty good little 
little deal and it's in good condition and everything runs absolutely fine so good stuff happy with that good game as well obviously uh family guy the video game uh yeah not not great doesn't have the manual which is a shame i watched the opening cutscene of this the first two jokes were so far away from landing i cringed they were awful jokes not remotely funny in any way also really aimed at Americans, but I don't even think Americans would find it funny. Like, what it says on the back here, see if we can find it. Uh, voiced and scripted by members of the Real Family Guy TV show creative team. All that actually means is these jokes were too shit for the TV show, so we put them onto the game. Because, my God, you need a humour transplant to find that funny. Jesus. I mean, Family Guy can be very hit or miss anyway, you know, but good God, even by the standards of Family Guy, that was really bad. This next game... Is a, it, it, it's a thing, let's just say that. Lake Masters EX. I don't know what the EX stands for. Whether that's uh, Maybe this is like an upgraded version to a PS1 game or something, because it had that vibe to it. This is always a bad sign. Midas. Midas, don't know how you pronounce them. They only ever published, like, budget games, and, like, I mean, really low-budget games. By the standards of budget games, this was actually, like, kind of fun in a weird sort of way. It's a complete mess, like, I can't even explain the soundtrack and how insane that is. But it's kind of oddly compelling. Um, so, I, I guess that's good. It worked fine, by the way. Even though it is a CD game, it worked absolutely fine. Is this the game that completely baffled me? No, it's not. Okay. We'll, we'll get onto that. But there's a game in here that baffled me in many ways, actually. But uh, there's in one way in particular that just made no sense to me because it contradicted everything I thought I knew. Um... We have The Haunted Mansion. Um, these games... I, I didn't say these games were good, by the way. Um, this was weird. I thought this was going to be like a Luigi's Mansion knockoff, but it's actually like a more of a shooter, maybe? Very bizarre. Um, has elements of Luigi's Mansion, though, definitely. Um, but yeah, it's, like I say, this stick is pain in the ass, you know, but what can you do? But yeah, it's all in there and everything, the manual and stuff. Um... Uh, okay, every time I see this, it gives me physical pain. Final Fantasy X 2. Final Fantasy X is one of my favourite games ever. It's my favourite RPG ever. I mean, granted, it's one of the only ones I've actually really liked, because I'm not generally an RPG player, but for whatever reason, FF10 really grabbed me. This piece of shit, on the other hand, it completely shits all over the story of FF10. It's an abomination, this thing, and even owning it is causing me physical pain. But we've got a copy, so there you go. Um, yeah, it, it works absolutely fine. The manual's in there. It's actually in pretty good condition, honestly. But, yeah. Unfortunately, the game exists, so we've got to have it to complete the collection. Uh, we have Bionicle, which is based on the Lego thing. Um, yeah, it's all complete and everything, I think. The manual's there. Yes, it is. Um, the sticker on the disc. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, the stupid game store that sold this before I'd put a thing on the rim advertising their store which don't do that lads um so that's that's a blemish but other than that the game is all there and everything and works fine and all that good stuff uh shrek the turd um this is just like a, a beat em up thing uh it's all in there and everything good condition works fine etc uh this game did not work uh pacific warriors dogfight Oh, sorry. Pacific Warriors 2 Dogfight. Um, it's by Midas Midas again, which is not great. Uh, there's no manual either, which is annoying. Um, yeah, it's a CD game, so again, it should have worked, but it just didn't. So I'm going to keep this to one side with the other Legends of Wrestling, and if that doesn't work on that, then obviously I know it's the game. But if it does work on another console, then you know it's all good. We have a natural good game for the first time in a while. Lord of the Rings The Third Age. I love this game. It's so good. EA knocked it out of the park with these Lord of the Rings games from this period. You had The Two Towers, which I haven't played, but I'm told is good. You had Return of the King, which was fantastic. And then you had this one, The Third Age, which is like... It's a turn-based RPG, essentially. If you've, if you've played Final Fantasy X, it plays very similarly. Like The combat's basically identical. Um, and it's, it's really good. It's just a very, very good RPG. Um... And if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you'll 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 probably love it to be honest. If you like RPGs and Lord of the Rings, so yeah, that's a good good game, good title. Unfortunately, 
never got ported outside of like the PS2 and the GameCube. There might be an Xbox version, I don't remember, but yeah, it's a shame we didn't get like a, a HD port of this, but obviously the fact that it's a movie tie-in, I don't think EA even, yeah, EA definitely don't own the rights to Lord of the Rings anymore, that's uh, Warner Brothers. So we're probably never going to see this game again, unfortunately. Um, but I'd love like a spiritual successor if Warner Brothers made one. I think it'd be great. So uh, we have Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. There are stickers, but when I tried to peel this one, it started to, you could see like it was going to leave a, a mark. So I'll probably try and get the stickers off these. Um, but yeah, this is just like a, a 3D platformer, pretty much. I didn't play very long of it, obviously. That's the thing with games like this. Not, I'm not quite the target demographic anymore, you know? I'm a 28-year-old man, so <laughs> it's it's not really... Uh, it wasn't made for me, was it? Let's be real. Um, I feel I feel like... I f put it this way. I feel the same about games like this that I feel about anime. It just wasn't made for me, and that's fine. Um, Smackdown... I'm not saying anime is only for kids, by the way, so don't get on, me, on at me about that. I just mean that it's... Not for me, that's literally all I meant. Um, Smackdown, just bring it. Uh, weird game. This was like the transitionary game between the PS1 and the PS2, so it's got a lot of issues. Small roster, terrible story mode. The commentary is god awful, but at least it's funny. Like, if anyone's ever played this game, you'll remember how bad the commentary is. Um, yeah, there's no manual, unfortunately, but it does work fine and everything. Um, but no. Play this game for the commentary. Also, it has one really cool feature, which is that you can do... Uh, uh, sorry, repositioning. Uh, you can do eight... Um, what's the word? You can have eight wrestlers in one match, basically, which I don't think any other SmackDown game can do. Maybe one of the newer ones can, I don't know. But that was a really cool thing at the time. to go, Especially from SmackDown 2, which can only, I think, have four players. To go from four to eight is quite a thing. Um, and then they downgraded it to six for the longest time because eight was just too many um, technical reasons and all that. But they managed eight for this game, so very impressive. And finally, this thing. Oh, actually, there's one more game I forgot, sorry. Uh, Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup. Uh, this is actually, apart from this scuff on the case, it's actually in really good condition. I was baffled by this game because, obviously, to test it, right? So I jumped in, I just went into the exhibition or whatever. I think I just... I just did, like, Gryffindor versus, I don't know, Hufflepuff or some shit, right? And literally, I got the ball, scored immediately. They got the ball. I pressed a button and won the ball back, and then I scored again. And then they got the ball again, and then I pressed a button and won it back. This happened six times. So I don't know if I just played on easy by accident or something, but it seemed like the easiest game ever made. I have no idea what was going on there. So, I don't know. Maybe I just played it on easy and didn't realise. I've not got a clue. But anyway, that's all there anyway. And finally, this thing. So, <sighs> I'm just going to show you the cover because it, it, it speaks volumes. I'm just going to let you take that in for a second. So, <sighs> where do I even begin with this? The proportions are a bit off. Um... I don't think there's any human being alive shaped like these two fellas here. Um, they also appear to be identical twins. It's just that they're wearing different clothes and accessories, let's just call them. Their, their legs are bizarrely proportioned. Like They've got huge thighs and then tiny knees, especially the guy on the left. He actually is proportioned the same as uh, Jack in the first Tekken game. Exactly the same proportions. Um, and then, of course, massive feet. What's going on with the huge feet? Why have they got clown feet? I don't understand what's going on here. Um, I'm actually going to drop the camera one second. Oh, uh, uh, there we go. That was interesting. Um, but of course, I mean, the the elephant in the room is, in this case, is a dog in the room. Why is there a dog just standing there in the middle of these two steroided up men in the middle of what appears to be a back alley? And there's like a thing on fire in the background. Is that supposed to be like an oil drum? I, honest to God. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, weird age rating in the corner. That's the German age rating. This must be the German version of the game. This is actually one of the reasons I bought the bundle. Not because of the game, obviously. The game is bloody awful, as we'll explain in a minute. But this, I, I just guess this would be hard to source, because I've never seen this game in my life. And also, it's a Phoenix game. Phoenix games were a budget publisher, and I believe maybe developer as well, as I'm going to drop the phone again. I'm holding it in a really awkward way. So, there we go. That's better. Um... 
Yeah, so these Phoenix games, they weren't produced in massive numbers because they were just budget games, but they're also all pretty much notoriously awful, and this is no exception. Um, it's one. It's probably the worst beat-em-up I've ever played. <laughs> like it's, it's actually impossible to play this game. Um, it's so awful. Everything's here, by the way. It's got the manual and everything. I yeah, unbelievable. Um, I don't even know where to begin about talking about this game. I, I don't think I will begin because if I begin, I'll never stop. It just, honest to God, it has to be the worst game I've ever played, and I've played some really fucking awful games. It oh man, let's just move on. <laughs> That's all the games. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it there actually, so you can. Uh, Stare at the image while we finish the video. But yeah, uh, that's all the pickups for now. We've got nothing in the pipeline at the moment because it's been a bit dead the past few days. I do. Ch I've been checking. Uh, I check eBay new listings in case someone. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm hoping on the off chance that someone lists like a, a really expensive, valuable game for like next to nothing by accident. That's always the hope, but that hasn't happened yet. Uh, apart from a few minor wins here and there. Um, They've got tiny heads as well. I need to stop looking at that because it's just going to distract me. Um, anyway, yeah, so there's nothing really in the past few days, unfortunately. Uh, I look on like Facebook Marketplace and there's a site called Spock or Spock or something, which is like a, it's supposed to be like an online car boot is the idea. It's basically just Facebook Marketplace, only it's not on Facebook. So it's exactly the same concept. Um but yeah, there's been nothing really on there. I've seen something on Facebook Marketplace today that could be interesting, but we'll see. If that deal comes through, then that would be really good if I get get hold of it. But we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, nothing in the park at the moment. So I am planning on uh, the restrictions have lifted in the UK. So I'm planning on going to the, uh, like all the I'll knit down the local charity shops on Saturday and see if there's anything in. Um, might also visit uh, like a, a nearby town as well. I don't drive, you see, so I have to get public transport, which is a pain in the ass. But um, I'll probably visit like a, a couple of the towns in my area, see if they've got anything in. Um, so yeah, if we pick up anything there, obviously we can do an update. But um, yeah, nothing in the pipeline. So we'll be back when we've got stuff to talk about, really. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we'll be back when we've got actual things that we can show. Uh, until then. Um, I'll leave you with, uh, I don't know what you would call these two, the Mitchell brothers, that'll do. Why is there a dog? <laughs>